Intro music. <laughs> A star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. Oh, James, do you, do you smell that? You smell it in the air? <laughs> it smells like rain. Yeah, it is very rainy in San Diego. No, what you smell is our first off-season podcast. <laughs> the sweet, sweet smell of off-season. <laughs> Honestly, though, this is the most exciting off-season in our history of our podcast. The last off-season, uh, we had, did not have a fun time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah welcome everybody um the regular season is over the playoffs are over uh the astros beat the phillies and that's the sound of everyone shocked shocked i tell you <gasps> yeah just shocked shocked um, i'm just i'm i everyone knows the phillies are more than capable of choking how come they couldn't choke the previous series yeah, it turns out, though, that if you no-hit the Phillies, they lose a lot of their mojo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bit, that was a Padres problem. They didn't no-hit the Phillies. So um, You live this, and you learn, you know. Yeah, but this is not a Phillies podcast or an Astros podcast. It's a Padres podcast. And uh, with the end of the playoffs, um, free agents come and go. Ops-ins are opting in and out. And we're going to talk a little bit about who's opted out. Who's sticking around, and uh, who do we want? What do we expect going forward? Because if you haven't been around for off-season content before, if a brand new trade happens, you and I jump on the mic, record a podcast, talk about reactions and how it fits into our team. Uh, around this time last year, we had Bob Melvin out of nowhere, and who knows who else would come out of nowhere? James, I'm excited. It's going to be exciting. It's definitely going to be exciting. Um, so opt in, opt out time. Uh, Will Myers' club option was not picked up, so he's a free agent. Not surprising, it was a $20 million option. Robert Suarez has opted out as well. Makes not sense. surprising, he's he turned a lot of heads during the playoffs and will probably get a nice payday. Yep, and Profar opted out as well. Also, not surprising, he for the first time. In his major league career, he lived up to all of his potential being the number one draft pick, and he's probably going to get paid by a big team looking to build. Yep. I, I I predict he will be a ranger next year. The The rangers will sign him again. A, a re-ranger. A re-ranger. <laughs> <laughs> um, Craig Stam is a free agent. Very big news, obviously. He's going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Pierce Johnson's a free agent. Um, I'm missing someone else. Is that it? I might be it. Jorge Alfaro. Jorge Alfaro. Yeah. There's. I think there's a mutual option, but I don't think we're gonna pick that up. Um, or AC said today that he's not gonna be a Padre, so they might drop him or DFA him. Probably. Um, so that's pretty much all the big ones moving on to free agency. Obviously, Josh Bell, Brandon Drury. They're rentals, so they are also in free agency. Clevenger, Manaya are both free agents, but we knew yeah. that already. We, I also, miss, yeah, we also know we're not going to assign them. Yeah. Um, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty decent part. Of, that's, a, that's a lot of people. Yes. You know? um, a lot of holes to fill. Um, Kevin AC wrote today an article that people in the potted organization assume pretty heavily that the the... the, the the Padres' focus will be in starting pitching and then left field and then first base um, in the free agency. Do you agree with that outlook? Well, those are our biggest holes. Yeah. That's where everyone left. As far as the catcher goes, I think it is Luis Camposano's year next year. I know I've said that before, but right. I, I, I literally think this is – if. If he does not, this is his time to shine. If he does not do well, either that or we're planning to trade him. Yeah. Because there is no reason, there is no reason to go out and spend money on a catcher when we have, yes, Austin Nola, Aaron Nola. I mean, you know, Nola is not the best catcher, but he's he's like 
middle of the road catcher and he the the staff likes him and we've been Kapasawa is going to be 24 same age Buster Posey was when he made a splash in the league Ooh. I'm just saying like I think the the team itself is going to be like listen this is your year there you go sink or swim yeah I like that um, but I think the Potter general assessment of starting pitching left field first base is probably the what you should look for. I, yes. I, I, I wouldn't mind a better catcher. I've, I wouldn't mind a catcher that can throw people out. Capasano has a decent arm. Yes. So, but those are the best ones. So, let's just start with starting pitching. Um, well, first of all, who do you think out of all those people that have opted out, go to free agency? Who do you think of any of them that we're going to resign? Jury is pretty attractive. You and I have talked about this. We're big jury people because of flexibility. He's not super expensive. He can platoon easily. He can play left field and first base. And second base. Right. And third base. I feel like if you get him for cheap, you can platoon first base potentially with someone else on uh, a lefty bat or or a lefty left fielder. Say a Jock Peterson, Jock Peterson versus righties, Brandon Jury versus lefties. I wouldn't mind that. No, I don't. Um, so I think Brandon Jury is a big one. I still think we do Clevenger. I still think we just. I think as, Nebo really likes Clevenger as an innings eater. Yeah, I think it has to be a very cheap deal, and it has to be just like a show me deal because boy was he bat in the end of last season. He really was. Um, so, um, I, I would bet on Drury and Clevenger would be my, my, of all those who I think the most likely Kevin Acey said Profar. I don't know, man. Profar is going to be worth a lot of like $15 million a year. I just don't see it. I just don't see. I like Profar. I think he's a fine, I, he was, he did a good job for us. Right. But. I uh, I just don't know. I'd rather get someone with a, with more power. Like if it's if it's between Brandon Jury and Jock Peterson and Profar, like uh, Profar is number three to me. I agree, absolutely agree. I think those two are good options. I also just because I like him. It all depends if some team gives Will Myers an outrageous contract. I love you, Will Myers. Go be the best you can be. But if not. If he accepts a cheap contract, he would be a great bench piece. Oh, yeah. Because one of the things that we did not have a lot of was reliable bench pieces this year. Somebody you know you can put in for a pinch hit, maybe not necessarily get a hit, but give you a competitive at bat, maybe draw a walk. Will Myers could do that. Yeah. I I big fan of Big Willie. You know that. Yeah, same thing. If it's super cheap, it's, it's advisable to do it. He has a he was a good first baseman too, and so yeah, I'm I'm very okay with that. It's gonna be. I just wor- I just think that someone like the Rockies are gonna give him some stupid deal, probably because they're gonna be the, the Rockies analytics team. Be like, look, he hits so well here. <laughs> yeah, but I think I mean the Rockies. I think. I don't know. The Rockies are such a weird team because they don't. They, they don't. They, I don't know. They don't make. If, any if sense. you woke up tomorrow and the Rockies gave him sixty million dollars, you wouldn't be surprised. No, I wouldn't. I would be bummed that he's not a Padre anymore. But good, good for Will. Yeah, because he'll have some inflated numbers playing in Colorado. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Uh, but again, that those the those are, I think those are fair picks. I think Clevenger. Honestly, if we keep him. I would rather see him in the bullpen and Nick Martinez in the rotation. Yeah, we didn't mention this. Nick Martinez's status is TBA to be determined or to be, to be announced. Um, he, he has not made clear if he's opting out of his deal or not, which makes it seem like they're negotiating something. Probably like an extension. Or because something I think like he's. I think there's a I, there's a world in which he's a number six starter, like he was last year, and really alleviates some of our injury issues. Um, but yeah, 
I, I Clevenger doing that, that role would I think would be very good too. And yeah, I wouldn't mind Pierce Johnson back either. Actually, neither would I. And and rumor has it, Drew Pomerantz might be healthy next year. <laughs> yeah, supposedly. <laughs> People uh, don't give him enough crap. <laughs> <laughs> We've made our our signature on crapping on Eric Cosmer. We probably should have made our signature crapping on Drew Pomeran. But the thing is, we could, at least Eric Cosmer played. I got Eric Cosmer played. <laughs> Drew Pomeran. For those that don't know, we're paying him more money than half our bullpen put together. Yeah, and he hasn't pitched in two years. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how awesome would that be, though? Um, yeah. So, do you want to do starting pitching first? Sure. What do you think about so, who do you starting pitching? So, there's a few ways that every offseason goes for a team. Either you trade a lot, you sign a lot, or you do a mixture of a both. So, James, the, star, the Padres starting pitching conundrum because right now as it stands. We have three starters that we used last year as starters that are currently with the team. There are a lot of there are people in our minor leagues that could be starters. AJ Morrow home could be a starter again. Um, but more than likely we need two more starters. Yes. So James, give me some of your picks for starting pitching. That you think the Potter should go after, or what, or what should we go? How should we go about it? I'm no, I I think I can't ne- can't pronounce his name. Kodai Senga. That's him. Yeah, yeah I knew it. I knew <laughs> you were gonna mention him. <laughs> <laughs> so that what's his last name again? Senga. Senga. It's like Sega with an N between the E and the G. Senga. I, was, I thought it was Sanga, but it's Senga. Senga, yeah. Senga. All right. And listen, I'm probably wrong, and someone will comment. Yeah. And- <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> He's a pitching phenom in yep. Japan. He had he basically won their Cy Young this year. Mm-hmm. And all indications are because he's he's declared free agency and he wants to go to America. Yep. His number one team to sign with is the San Diego Padres. A, because we had a lot of scouts and AJ Prello likes to smooth our, our Japanese prospects and He's a good lifelong friend of you, Darvish. Yep. And they call him you, Darvish's protege. And he's like a you, Darvish, but he can throw 101 miles an hour, but he also has 17 pitches. It's not 17. I think he has like six pitches, but he also has two different arm slots. He's an amazing pitcher. Whether they utilize all of that in the big leagues, I don't know, but I think. I think it's pretty much a done deal. We'll probably sign him to like a four-year, $50 million contract or a three-year, $40 million contract. Yeah, I really want it to be a done deal because I really like him too. I do too. I, I think he's really fun. I mean, it's just going to be about what he – I mean, what he does – what what team offers him the kind of uh, workload he wants. Because I also think the Padres are not – Potter are going to be smart enough to be like, hey, because he has control issues. He has a pretty high walk rate because he throws that splitter. He has a nasty splitter, which is why he's considered Darvish's protege. Um, and so it's... I I wonder if the Potter are going to be like, hey, if you don't do well, you're going to be the bullpen. Um, and, that, and it's going to be up to the, him to be like, I want to only start. And there are teams that are going to do that. Like the Cubs are like, you're going to start every third day. Because we're not going to playoffs until twenty thirty five, right? Probably. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I I think I think he's the he is. As I look at the free agent landscape, I think he's the for starting pitching. I think he's the guy you go after, and you try to make your best bet towards that. Because I think he's he fits so many holes. He can become a relief pitcher pretty easily. That stuff is super nasty. But he just has a work has a, has had a workload in Japan. Darvish connection, I agree. Um, what do you think about um, what do you think about Chris Bassett? 
Um, he'd be fine. Yeah, that's what I'm the same. Like, he had a good year this year. He did. I just don't think that. I know we're. I know what we're replacing. We want a number three, number four starter. But I, I kind of want someone who has a better upside than Bassett. I feel like Bassett's upside is not as good as Senga's. Like, oh no, not yeah. at all. The problem with Bassett is he's 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 one of those guys that if he's a lot like a Shamanaya, if everything is working, he's unhittable. But if one pitch isn't hitting his spot, he's very very hittable. The problem is the Potter just beat him up twice this year. <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem. I, I've I've not seen him personally do well. <laughs> His numbers <laughs> say he has done well, but I've never seen it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's fine. If it's a cheap enough deal, yeah. I, I definitely don't think give him $100 million. I don't think that's definitely not worth that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think about uh, trading for one of the Marlins pitchers? They're going to be too expensive. I think... Because obviously, I mean, they have a lot of really good pitchers. Yeah, I think because they're also still under control. Yeah, the Marlins are going to try to make a push. I think they might be one of those teams looking to sign. They might sign Jerickson Pro for. They might sign a few other people because they are in a very with that kind of a starting lineup. If they had an offense that was ten percent better, they would have been in the heat. Yeah, their their rotation's filthy, and even their bullpen's good. Like, they just can't score more than two runs. Like, that's literally their problem. They can't score more than two runs. Yeah, exactly. They need offense. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I honestly think they're going after offense. They might, if they can find like Will Myers, they might even sign Will Myers. I don't imagine why. I mean, they might just yeah. just for a steady bat. It's a good hitter's park. I, I don't know. I, I, um, Jock Peterson might be a good fit for them too, yeah. but they also might do a lot of stupid things. They might go after like Jose Abreu and all the really old guys on the yeah. just to get batter, batters yeah. to to make a run. When when you have legit three aces on your staff that are all potential Cy Young winners, but they can't score them runs. Right. It's terrible. Also, they need a bullpen. But, like, either if they trade any of those starting pitchers, they're admitting to the whole league, we're going to suck for 10 years. But what if they did that? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm proposing is, James, what if they did that? It would cost us Jake Cronenworth and uh, potentially um, uh, Jackson Merle. Yeah. It would cost us a lot. Do you think, he, the, well, yeah, Alcant- Alcantara is definitely more expensive than Otani, for sure. Um, yeah, they're all more expensive, because they all have multiple years of control. Yeah. Um, Although they, the, the Angels said Otani will not be traded. Uh, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't want to make this an Otani podcast, but I did mention it in the Angels now. The only reason why I brought that up, because you mentioned Merrill and o- Cronenworth, every single proposal for Otani starts with, Merrill plus a major league player, Christian yeah. player, whether it's Grisham or Cronenworth. That's the only reason why I brought it up. But I think it's just, I think the I think actually think the package for any of the Marlins, um, especially if they trade Alcantara, like you definitely need those. That's the package you send over because it's you have three years of control with that guy. Yeah, you're definitely going to send a lot for that guy. But they're not going to trade him. They're going to probably play trade Pablo Lopez, who is their. Who's their weak number three starter? Who's still like would be most player teams number one? Yeah. Um, so you don't think we could trade? So you don't think we trade for? I mean, the other option is Corbin Burns. There's been rumors that the, the Brewers are cheap beyond belief. Not well, rumors. yeah, not not rumors. They are cheap beyond belief. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to be doing fire selling again. I think he's only two years left on his deal. I think there's enough free agent talent on the market for pitching right now than to trade for. So um, you're saying you'd rather do 
go the full free agent route. You wouldn't want to trade for any. Unless we get, I mean, Corbin Burns would be astounding. You know, oh, Sandy Alicant- Alcantara would be amazing. The Marlins aren't going to trade him. I, I just, I, I think it would be it's an easier way to sign a player. Hey, like um, Nathan Olivaldi. Yeah, I think he would be a great fit as a number five starter for us. Yeah, like hey. You want to be on a winning team again? Come play in San Diego. Even Chris Bassett would be an okay starter. I just think he might. I think uh, um, Nathan will be cheaper than Chris. So what's your what's your wish list for starters? If I can wave a magic wand and everything that I say would be granted. Yeah, just for starting pitching. Senga. Yeah. Carlos Rendon. And uh, okay, go for th- you're gonna go for three of them. Okay, <laughs> well, I mean, that, those, would be the, those would be the first two, uh, and then uh, probably all of Aldi. Uh, I can never see Aldi. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if we get. I I wouldn't be surprised if Evaldi and Senga are is all we get this off season, right? Um, I really like Rodon, and I don't think that's. That's not a hot take. I don't no. <laughs> oh, weird. Like a lefty throws 100 miles an hour that's just filthy? Yeah, whatever. I I think my wish list would be Senga and I think Rodon too. But that's probably, that's like the most realistic. I, I, I like Eovaldi a lot. I think his durability is like waxes and wanes. Um, yeah, I would love a Senga. Rodon might be too expensive. But yeah, if I if I'm a wish, it'd be Rodon Senga. So this is this is the problem that I'm I'm foreseeing. Yeah. Because since the Mets super overpaid for um, Diaz. Yeah. I super have, overpaid. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question. They overpaid for him. Relief pitchers should not be. And this is no disrespect to relief pitchers, but they're not known to be consistent, right? And and I'm. You know, there's very few of them that are consistent for more than 10 years. Yeah, and that's that's what made Trevor Hoffman and Mariano Rivera such right. diamonds in the rough because they lasted, they all, they both had 20 years of a consistent career. Closers don't have that. They if, if people a, don't know, Edwin Diaz signed a $102 million five-year contract with the Mets a couple days ago. He's had two good years in the majors. And he's a closer. Good for him. Yeah. But I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of overpaying. Yeah. And I have a feeling the Texas Rangers are going to overpay a lot. Like, I think they're going to over. Uh, Carlos Rondon is going to get just. On, him on the Rangers is actually pretty fun. Yeah. That's actually pretty fun. That's a pretty fun team. But yeah, I could totally see him overpaying for them. Yeah. Like, he might get a $200 million contract. Yeah. Yep. Just because the Rangers want to be competitive, and the only way they know how to be competitive is spend a lot of money that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, hey, let's spend a ton of money on seven players. How do we not go to the playoffs? Because it's a 25-man roster. Yeah. <laughs> they have Bruce Bochy now, man. They do. And and that's why I think they're they're in a win now mentality and they're gonna they're gonna pay I, I think that's where uh, Trey Turner's going. I think that's where um, Rendon will end up going. I think that's where, honestly, I think they're going to make a big bid for Degrom, and even Judge. I I, I think they're they're in for, they're in uh, at every, I, You're probably right. They're probably going to try to get another two marquee free agents. Yeah. Just to get. Yeah. And Kershaw's got to play for them at some point. Kershaw lived like five minutes from there. He's yeah. legally, he legally obligated to play from. I, the Dodgers aren't going to get rid of Kershaw. <laughs> I mean, they're getting rid of the other Turner. They're losing both Turners this offseason. Yeah. I'm not going to um, be sad about that. No. To be honest. Yeah. So, whatever. I, I mean, it's going to be annoying if Carlos Correa signs for the Dodgers, but whatever. Both Turners might end up in. Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that those are my like I starting pitching 
a cost rundown I would love to have because that's another ace. Would you overpay for would you overpay for one great starter and just pick up the pieces the rest of the way? Like if you could get Rodon and let's just say Peter Siley's like, hey Preller, I want you to spend money on three positions well, not two like, you know, I I, I want I don't want two starting pitch. I want a, I want like a definitively good pitcher. Would you overpay for one starting pitcher? Yes. Especially would, for the caliber of Rondon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would too. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's Preller's style per se, but I definitely would. I would I, if if you had to pick one free agent that I think we could conceivably get, I think I'd I'd go for that. But, yeah. But let's move on to left field, James. Um as we mentioned, Jericho Profar is moving on to the great beyond. Calls free agency. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like where are you going with that? <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase it like Scott Boris is going to phrase it. Okay, you know Scott Boris is, is he Scott Boris? Is, yeah, oh my of course goodness. he is. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I realize this. If the how many sports agents do you know their names? I only know two. Scott Boris and Dan Lozano, who's Manny Machado's agent. Okay. And the only reason why I know Dan Lozano was because I thought Manny Machado was a Boris client. And then in a press conference, it wasn't. He wasn't there. I, I know Boris and Jerry Maguire. Right. <laughs> and that's because one of them had a movie based on him. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying, which box do you know? Muhammad Ali? Uh, Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So left field. Um, and this is an interesting discussion of itself because um, we have someone on our team that has played left field before, um, but now plays right field for us, Juan Soto. And we have someone on our team who might play right field or left field when he gets returns from suspension on April 20th, one for now, Tatis Jr., um, but as it stands now, we need a corner outfielder. Um, it seems to be the the desire of a team. Whether it's going to be in a platoony way, where it's just going to be sometimes Tatis to play shortstop, Kim at second, Cronenworth at first, and this left fielder, or right fielder plays with Grisham and Soto. Um, the desire of a team is to have a left fielder. So. Um, Left fielders, not, there's not actually a lot of corner outfielders available. Um, there's the big guy, Aaron Judge, but we'll talk about him later. But there's Jock Peterson. There's Tommy Pham. Um, how funny it would be if we signed both of those guys? How hilarious would it be if that's our platoon left field? It is two guys that hate literally hate each other and want to slap the other as uh, if we do that that means we have to sign will smith and chris rock to the do the post and pregame report right right because yeah. we're just gonna have slaps all over the place if that happens we gotta have like we gotta have a reality television show this is true it just the way it's gotta be you know because i think you know it starts out really contentious they hate each other but near the end of the season they're best friends yeah, like that's how it works. That's how it always works. So, and uh, and our and and we would have the best pre and post games. People oh, yeah. would just tune in to watch those two talk. Oh yeah, because even if they're not hitting each other, they're both funny and entertaining. Oh, they're both very funny. Yeah, they're both very funny. <laughs> uh, Rock yeah. and Smith, uh, <laughs> Fam and yeah. Peterson. Oh man, that'd be so funny. Uh, well, here's the thing: Tommy Fam is out of the question. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know you're such a Tommy Fam hater. No, not Tommy <laughs> Fam. Uh, Jock Peterson's an interesting because he can play both corner outfield positions, both really well. Yeah. He can also play first base a little bit. He's a left handed power bat. He made it to the All Star game this year. He might again. He he shouldn't be overbid for, but I also can see player teams paying yeah. a ton of money for him. But on all count, he's also a really good clubhouse guy. Mm-hmm. So 
we know he likes playing fantasy football. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Adores it. He might not play by the rules, no. but he plays it. Or by the rules for some. Anyway, <laughs> so, and for those of you who don't know, <laughs> we don't have time to get into the, the, the Tommy Pham slapping Jock Pearson during the, during the season this year, but look it up. It's weird. Yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> it's it, so it, funny. It's honestly one of the funniest things ever ever in baseball. Rich Eisen like dedicated weeks to it. It's yeah. the greatest thing ever. ever. Anyway, so that that's I would like to see Jock Pierce. I think he's a fun guy. Yeah. He'd be fun in the outfield. I'm always a fan of left handed power bats. I I think he'd probably be the best fit for us because he can play left or he can play right. Uh Honestly, the biggest question in my mind for the outfield is center field. Yeah. Because if Jerickson, but because if Trent Grisham won another gold glove, but if he can't turn it around offensively, right? He's, he can't have an offensive liability like that. So he might be a bench piece. But then again, we have Jose Azucar as a bench piece, and he's a, also a really good center fielder. So and you know Tatis Jr. can play the center play center field, so it's good. so we have more flexibility. I would rather see and again, Jock Peterson is my ideal candidate because he can also play first base. Yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder because there's not a lot of corner outfield. Um, the Mets are rumored to list in offers Mark Canna. He's a righty. I don't mind that at all. He's probably going to be super expensive because the Mets would like him. Um, Chad Pinder from the A's is good. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, I honestly think it's Jock Peterson's the get. Because it, throughout this entire 2020, I cannot say that the year we're, of our Lord that we're currently in. In the year of our Lord 2022, the Pennsylvania Padres, did not have a lefty bat off the bench ever, ever that was successful. Yes, I do remember Robinson Cano and Noah Rosara and Eric Cosmer, and they all were bad. They're all bad. They're all very, very bad and didn't hit home runs. So you're not a good lefty power bat. So Jock Peterson's a guy that, f- that fits the platoon idea super well. So you could have a Zokar in left field for a bit of a game and then switch out to to Peterson, right? And I think that I think that that's the get to get because otherwise I think you kind of you can you can get a Brennan Drury and make it work with our current outfield. You can make Juan Soto move left, Tatis to right, Grisham to center, you know, infield of four short stops, right? Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. And that's a perfectly fine team. It's just Having someone like Jock Peterson is like the actual game changer. Now, there's one more name that I have to bring up that is always a, a contentious subject between you and I, but he is very cheap, and there's no more shift next year. And that one guy is named after me, of course. One Joey Gallo. He can play first base. He can play every outfield position. I wish we had a video podcast because James is contorting in disgust, shaking his head, just like, why would you bring him up? But he's going to be so cheap. There's no shift anymore. And he's in a new environment. We're going to teach him how to hit the ball more. I don't know, man. It could be cool. It'd be pre- it would be pretty fun. Like, what if we make him forty a home run a year again, Gallo? You wouldn't be mad about that. Here's the problem. <laughs> Just ignore how many strikeouts he had last year. <laughs> His sub one fifty batting average for most of the year. <laughs> Jerick, I mean, Trent Grisham was a better hitter than him for most of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, here's the thing. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Ultimately, I think Joey Gallo is going to be a Padre. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I did it. I did it. (laughs) 
Because AJ Preller likes to collect oh, Power love, Rangers. Loves them. Adores and, them. And yes, with no shift, we're going to see Chronoworth hitting a lot better. We're going to see Soto hitting a lot better. And maybe Joey Gallo might get a single or two. And yes, when he left New York, he started hitting better. But he still... You thought Alfaro strikes out a lot. <laughs> like, that guy is... <laughs> ne- is never not swinging at bad pitches. I... The problem is he can play a really good outfield. Oh, yeah. He's a He's gold a very good good outfielder. Fielder, yeah. He also plays a really good first base. Yeah. He's a great athlete. His swing has more holes in it than Cody Bellinger. <laughs> and Cody Bellinger is also might be a free agent. Yeah, I was going to bring it up. If who, I was, who do you want of those two, Cody Bellinger or Joey Gallo? I just say let's just assume for the sake of fun little exercise that tortures you very immensely. They're both super cheap. We had only had to pick one, which who would you pick? Uh, Gallo. Yeah, we have to pick Gallo. <laughs> Just because I don't think Cody Bellinger is a good person. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been a Dodger too long. There's no yeah. way he doesn't have literal skeletons in his closet. Yeah. I think Cody Bellinger's swing is like way too large. This might be the dumbest, like non-analytic pitch hit mechanic thing ever to say, but like his swing is so massive. Like he just has this super wide, it's large swing Cody Bellinger has, and I feel like Gallo is actually fixable. Gallo hit gets the ball much quicker. I agree. Um, plus his name's Joey, and Joey's are cool. Yeah, and I've never wanted to. <laughs> Openly punch him in the face like I wanted to Cody yeah. Bellinger. I'm just glad that my Joey Gala agenda has finally <laughs> has finally come into your brain. Yeah, <sighs> I, I I I wonder if he's just like some he's our prove me position player that we sign a one year seven million dollar contract yeah. with an option because like, his defense is worth it. If he plays a lot, his his defense is worth that yeah. much. I agree. And and also, when Tatis Jr. comes back, he is a th- legit power threat coming off the bench. Yeah. And in a tight game situation, end of the game situation, he's a lot like a Faro. If you have to throw him strikes, he will hit it a mile. Yep. Yep. I agree. And that leads us to the final position that we're supposedly looking out for, and that's our first base. Um, this Anthony is- Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo. No, right. <laughs> There's no question. That's yeah. who I'd want. Yeah, this is from a depth perspective. This is their weakest from like a power upgrade. We don't have any other miners. I can just immediately upgrade this position. We can fill it easily in our position with the Cronenworth, but that doesn't. You want to have power there. Yeah. And right now, the two big first basemen are Rizzo and jo- Jose Abreu. Um. Jose Abreu had a really bad season last year, but he was also on a really bad team. Anthony Rizzo has always been consistent. Anthony Rizzo has always been a gold glove caliber first baseman. He hit 34 something home runs last year. Yep. He started in San Diego. I would like to see him end his career in San Diego. I would like to give him a three-year contract. He's 34 years old, but he doesn't... He's a competitor. He's a gamer. He's all. He's the. He's the best first baseman out there right now. I do not want to sign. I don't want to hear the name Abreu or JD Martinez, mm. all those guys that are you know almost older than I am, still playing baseball. Like no, you don't. Like I. I legitimately think if any if Jose Abreu goes anywhere, it will be Florida. Because that's where all retirees go. Yeah. But I, I, I can't. I Anthony Rizzo is the only person I think could play that, that I would like to see. I'm not as down on Abreu as you are. I think he got. 
a team that just fell apart, so we got no protection. He can still hit doubles everywhere. Um, I don't think he can still. He still has a great like. He actually still hits the crap out of the baseball. So I don't. I'm not as down on him as you are. I just don't want to like. I don't want him to be the marquee signing of the off season, right? I don't. And I think with Rizzo, you have to make like he declined a 19 million dollar offer from the Yankees. So Rizzo wants a 80 million, 100 million dollar deal. Yeah. Um, to play out the rest of his career. Right. He wants a five year, hundred million dollar career offer. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I I think this is a position where you, of all the positions, I feel like this is the one you. I I think this is the one you can kind of get away with not filling. Right, as long as you get what we talked about earlier, if you get a Senga and a Jock Peterson and you fill in this first base position, you're like, you don't you feel like ah, it's a it's like you wish you did, but like okay, if we sign a. Drury, right? There's, there's a lot more options at first base than anything else, right? If we want a true first baseman, yes, Anthony Rizzo. But if you can play around with it, it's a lot like, like at this point, it's a lot like a DH because right, Cronenworth plays an excellent first base, and if Tatis wants to be a shortstop again, Kim goes to second, Tatis at short, Cronenworth right, at first. Right, right. That's an excellent and and um. Machado at third, right? Like you said, that's four shortstops. Yeah, and with no shift, we would need that range. That's why, if we needed a dedicated first baseman, we would need somebody like an Anthony Rizzo, who is a good defensive first baseman. Yep, yep. I agree. I think it's Jose Abreu, Rizzo. Those are the two options that I wouldn't mind us spending money on. Um, Trade wise, I could see us not filling this. And then do a trade deadline for a better first baseman, a more power centric first baseman. Um, like I actually wouldn't mind if Josh Bell came back cheap again. I wouldn't either, but, but I, I just don't think he will. I just don't think he'll take a cheaper deal. Um, but I, this is the first base position. I, I don't think I, I have the least faith it will fill with a with someone. Um, um, before the start of the season. Where I think that we have to do starting pitching and left field power bat lefty thing is a very it's something we have to fill. So And you can you can get a lot of people I think it's like Jackson Murrell, if we don't trade him, could fill in a position in an infield and make Jay Cron worth the first baseman. Right. right. Yep. It all um, depends. I, guess, I agree. That that's the least that's if we're going to get a dedicated first baseman, I want Rizzo. Right. But if not, we we have plenty of options. I would rather spend... If I could get a Senga and a Rodon, I don't care about first base. Yeah. And a, and a, and a better lefty... left Like a better outfielder. If we get a cheap Gallo, yeah. Right. Right. I'm, that's okay to me. Joey Gallo is going to be so good next year, dude. <laughs> dude, and the brown and gold. Now batting Joey Gallo. And people are going to go crazy... It's going to be awesome, dude. All thing I can say is we can't mock, we can't knock him for his defense because we had a player for a several years on first base that couldn't <laughs> hit or play defensively <laughs> other than the first month of the year. And that's why people were tired of him yeah. because he couldn't, he couldn't help you on either end of the field. Correct. Gallo could help you defensively. Yep. And he occasionally can lean into a home run. Yep. Yep. I'm excited. The final bit of this episode is we haven't we've we I mean, we've mentioned him twice now. I I don't know if I mentioned both of them, but the, the marquee free agents of us of in baseball right now are Aaron Judge and uh, Jacob Degrom. And the question I pose to you, James, is if the Potters didn't make a play at any of a, any of those two. Who would you want them to go after? Because Bleacher Report writer, well, has any any sources said that the Padres are most likely to land Degrom, which is very interesting to me. I don't want Degrom. Yeah, I don't. I he's a great pitcher. 
people who keep saying he's the best pitcher in the last 10 years are wrong. You know how many starts he's made the last three years? How many? 34. You yeah. know how many starts an average pitcher in a major league baseball starter is expected to start every year? At least 25 would be honest. 32. Yeah. So yeah. in three years, he has started... Yeah, one of them was a pandemic year. Sure. But he's hurt all the time. Even the couple... Yes, he won two Cy Youngs in a row. Even one of those years, he missed a couple starts. If we get him, that means we have to have a six-man rotation. Yep. Because we need to keep him healthy. So, yeah, you're going to be giving this guy $50 million a year, plus whoever else you're going to sign has to be there. You have to have a six-man rotation because he is always hurt. And I, I he's 34 years old. He is, again, he's hurt all the time. I don't I don't want the Grom. I'm sure some team will overpay for him and for whatever reason then he'll just be perfect he'll ha- he'll have 40 starts next year <laughs> somehow. And I, and I don't I won't even care because I don't <laughs> want to deal with it. The amount of people if you follow Twitter at all and especially Mets Twitter they're always just like, "Oh, DeGrom's finally going to start tomorrow." Yeah, he, he he pitches two games, he's out for a month. Two games, he's out for a month. Yeah, those two games are phenomenal. Right. But no, he's too much of a I know it's not my money. <laughs> right. But it's my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron Judge would be the one. Aaron I Judge, go. yeah. I think I think I understand your logic and I I think I probably agree with it, but it'd be pretty fun to have DeGrom though. The, the the one month he's healthy would be pretty fun. You just got to hope it's the playoffs. Yeah. Like, imagine rolling into any playoff series with Darvish, Snell, Musgrove, and DeGrom. Like, it's just game over, right? It's just like, like you're not going to win this game, dude. Right? Yeah, I agree. But I just... I, I, I also don't see... DeGrom is probably one of those players... That a team like Tech, they, for whatever reason, the Braves are in the top bidding for Degrom as well, but some team is going to give him a four-year contract, fifty million a year, and it's he and doesn't have a track record of being healthy. That's for sure. It does not, and and so I think Degrom is going to be a hell mary for I think Texas. For so I just think. The Rangers are going to spend so much stupid money because they already they they signed um, what was his name from the Seager do- yeah the three hundred twenty five million um, they overpaid Marcus for Simeon, Seager two hundred million dollars yeah yeah I just have a feeling they're going to go after him and honestly you know who I'd love just love to see sign Aaron Judge who? not because we're just because I would love to see the numbers he put up, I'd love to see Colorado sign him. How fun would that be? Hit nine hundred home runs in a season, just like oh, how fun would that be? That, yeah, if they, imagine if they like like here's a ten year, five hundred million dollar contract. You're like, what are you doing? Bunny hit the eighty home runs. How fun, <laughs> that'd be super fun. That would be. Like they would still lose hundred games every year, but. Be pretty fun. I would go watch a call. I would fly to Colorado watch a Rockies game, <laughs> just to see him hit. The Padres wouldn't even have to be playing him, right, right? Just to see, oh, moonshot, moonshot. Uh, that that's yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Fun. If any team in the West, of, the National League West, were to sign him, I'd want the Rockies too, just like for that. the fun of it. That'd be pretty fun. That'd be awesome. Well, James, but the- who do you think about Degrom's? I didn't. Uh, I, uh, I agree with him. I, I really like DeGrom. I think he's very, obviously very, very good. And I think, I think that you have to be willing to have otherworldly pitching performances 60% of the time and the rest of it, you don't know. And that 60% of the time can be very valuable. And Just, I also think it's safe to say neither one of us think there's a chance in yeah, that we'll I, get 
judge. I don't either one of them. I don't think it's. I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's prudent. I'd rather get. I'd rather get Zenga, Peterson, and Rizzo than just Degrom. I agree. Um, but you know, I don't know. I I, I really like Degrom. I think he is. He is mechanically a perfect pitcher, obviously, and he's very, very good. And I think that maybe the maybe just our six man rotation would help him, like you said, not be dead so early. And uh, but no, yeah. like it, it, it's a we it's a must if we get him. We need a six man right, rotation, right? 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 But I, I don't know. I, I I just because he's such a dominant force, like. He is what people think. I mean, sure, there's a Max Scherzer is a very good pitcher. I'm not disrespecting him at all, but like, he is what people think Max Scherzer is. In a in a in a in a in when you need someone to lock some something down, he's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy in baseball you go to, right? Um, so that's powerful. I think it's. I I, I probably would go to Grom just because. If you got one or two playoff runs out of them, it's probably worth it. Now that being said, Aaron Judge, you have fifty home runs that gives you the playoffs every year. True. So, um, I I don't think we go after either one of them, uh, but I would go after. But I, I would just say I would slightly prefer to Grum over Judge. So, so realistic wish list where uh, Peterson. Rizzo, Sang- Sanga, Sanga, Rodon. Rodon's not realistic. I would love it though. I think it's more realistic if we get Rodon than Degrom. Oh, way more realistic. But and unfortunately, we have to put Joey Gallo in there yeah. too. Very realistic, and probably and honestly, probably Brian Jury's in the mix there. Too. Yeah, you know. Um, I think one of those guys will be a Padre for sure come next year. And let's not forget AJ Preller's his keen skill set is being suddenly trading for people you never expected him to trade for. Exactly. So who knows? We might find someone even crazier. And we'll we'll podcast about it like we normally do. And uh, looking forward to it. So until next time, James, go Padres. Go Padres. You can hang a star on that, baby!